What Ooh. is beautiful? It's something that is pretty hard to describe to me. Marilyn Monroe is just absolutely gorgeous. And she's iconic. She's thought-provoking. But most of all, she stands the test of time. You're always going to remember her happy birthday, Mr. President. <laughs> her Andy Warhol color renditions. But there's another lady who's equally as important and beautiful too, Audrey Hepburn. And she has that right look. She made smoking a long cigarette seem classy and sassy. You know? <laughs> but let's remove ourselves from this notion of beauty, okay? Because both women are equally beautiful, aren't they? And to each our own is what beauty is. And this is where our journey sort of begins. And a lot of the time, the journey is right in our pocket to capture a moment, right? All of us have a camera phone, or all of us at least have a point and shoot, right? So let's, what, what we're going to uncover today is capturing and unveiling the secrets to your own beautiful images. Now for me, growing up, I grew up with Polaroid. I can remember my dad getting the first Polaroid camera. I can remember waving the film for 10 to 15 seconds as a half-cropped head came, came to view. And I have a box of these back at home. And every now and then I'll open it, and I can still remember the smell of the Polaroid film. Yeah. Just like I can remember my first kiss. And this is where the story really begins. And I was coming off the baseball field after playing a game of kickball, and there was this girl that I absolutely just loved. I was in fifth grade. And she told me she had a secret, and she came over, and she leaned in and gave me this big wet kiss on the side of my cheek. And I followed back, giving her one, as my heart raced and my stomach <laughs> filled with butter butterflies, just like my best friend Mark Anthony does every time he takes a drag of a cigarette. His lungs fills, you know, fills with the carbon monoxide, and he can feel the nicotine rush. And he too has that similar first kiss experience. And it goes right on in to my 15-year-old brother, who's in high school, and, you know, he just wants to be with every girl that passes by him. <laughs> and with each mirror pic that he puts on, it's followed by 60 likes and 30 <laughs> comments that say, you're sexy. And out of those ones, you're sexy, he follows through with it. And, his, and he gets his heart broken. But out of all of it, we can still find a moment throughout of all the chaos, all the breakups, we can still find one moment where it's just silent. Much like the couple sitting in the middle of the road here. And then it becomes this idea of simplicity, right? Much like Noah and Allie in the notebook, as they lie in the middle of the road and they look up into the night sky. You can remember that, and it's a story. You can capture it. But we're also drawn sort of to the bottom left-hand screen of the tree. What's underneath it? What else is there? And it sort of becomes, you, you sort of become confused with everything. And you forget to see what else is out there, right? Just like Jose, who's standing on top of the building, pressure washing, as he's trying to make ends meet, dollar for dollar, to, to provide for him and his family, especially this little girl who's going through dance classes. And as she makes it to the big stage, and she's performing, every twirl on the pointed toe that she's on, her head swivels back, and it lands repeatedly on her father, time and time and time again. And the audience knows that, and they feel that emotion. And at the end of the performance, they applaud, and then they move out into the city streets. Where some of us might seem to think that the story ends here, but in reality, it doesn't continues and it moves on. It takes different forms and for some the story is told in different ways through body language, tone, maybe even language itself interferes with the story. Cultural differences carry on the story to make it seem and, and seem different. And as, as, as we move on it creates an impact. And that impact is like dropping a stone in the of the water and watching the first ripple ripple out. And that first ripple is that first story followed by the second ripple, followed by the third, and so on and so forth. Until we come back to the very centered meaning of that first kiss universal feeling. We all know it, we can all feel it. And when the identity of ourself is hidden, I think we lose the purpose in telling that story to begin with. Right? 
So it all goes in to this idea of perspective. And the perspective in which we go about in telling a story defines on how we capture the moment from the very beginning. You know, every story has its own interpretation, just like every photo has its own interpretation. And it's for the audience to develop that interpretation through their own perspective. Now let me tell you a story. Okay? Here's a really boring one. This is my sister. She's drinking Poland's blue water. As my mom, and unfortunately the bottle is covering her face, and she just happens to be texting someone. The end. That's boring. And I just told you the concrete meanings of that photo, but let's go back into the dumpling man, right? The dumpling man is filling each green wonton with precision on every pinch. And when it's steamed and deep fried, you can almost taste his first kiss that he put into the green wonton. You can feel that emotion and passion, much like how you, how you capture a photo. And capturing a photo, I think we have this misconception that there's a right time. Well, guess what? There was no right time to have a disaster, but out of it came a beautiful moment, right? And that's something that we need to see beyond, that every moment, even this moment right now is beautiful, and we can capture it today, right? And it kind of goes in to my idea of Heath Ledger and his story role that he took on as a Joker. He put his entire emphasis, his entire life into that one role, and it's been played out on the big screen for all of us to look at. And it became a cultural influence. And it stands the test of time. But what I want to leave, leave with you guys today is, number one rule, just have fun taking any photo that you want to take. right? But remember that it's not so much the photo that makes it beautiful, as much as the story itself that the photo is engaging your, your, your perspective in. Thank you. What's your favorite thing to take pictures of? Like, do you like digital, phone, Polaroid? Um, uh, like, honestly, this is sort of just a hidden passion of mine that sort of is, I'm trying to uncover it. Mm -hmm. So I really mm -hmm. haven't gotten the chance to experience anything in film. Yeah. Uh, the most that I've ever done in film was Polaroid, and that was just the mm -hmm. in the yeah. wait 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. that, that was about it. Um, I have a Nikon that I just got for Christmas, but it's like a, a level entry one. Yeah. I think I think what's really important to know, <laughs> you want to know something? It's not so much 
the equipment that you have, but just the person taking the photo. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it doesn't matter what car they're driving, it's all about the driver. Um, I ain't really gonna deep into it. Uh, I'd say people. People. People is just fun to shoot. Because yeah. sometimes they don't even know that you're taking a photo. And that's, yeah. Those are the yeah. most. Well, when you see a picture like that, it's so raw and it's just so yeah. true. I hate. It. I love our photos. It's great. And also a little stalkerish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm gonna start doing that though. Like I'm like pulling them aside when you go out and see it. Those are all from my iPhone. Unfortunately, the resolution sucked when I blew it up, so I just squeezed them small. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it looked really good. good. I liked yeah. it. Did somebody else have a hand raise over here? Kevin, did you? No. Well, have you ever gotten photo bombing? No, what is it? <laughs> Oh so my god! You just like oh, pop in oh, and yeah, like really, really fun. Like anytime somebody takes a picture of yeah. the iClub now, if I see yeah. the camera, I'm gonna be in the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Photo bombing is so much fun. Uh, New Year's Day in New York City, I went and I was in like maybe a hundred different pictures. Yeah, I was just like, hey, that's great. I'm big. And I love a good photo bomb. Like I just yeah. love to, you know, it's like a gem when you see one and someone bombs you. Yeah. My, fr beautiful. my friend, uh, his name's Craig, he loves doing it. Like, he'll just like give this like face that he does. Like, there's a serious picture going on. He'll just like give this funny face or he'll do a, it's hilarious. Photobombing yeah. is awesome. Mayos and Jen? Yeah. Oh! Marilyn or Audrey? Um, I don't like Marilyn. Marilyn. Uh, uh, not to, not to hate on blogs, okay? But Marilyn is the only blonde that I ever go for. Yeah. <laughs> Marilyn's oh. the only one that's. I'm a, I'm a it's crazy it's all about like, Audrey Hepburn. It's crazy oh, that, like, how the image of beauty has changed. Like, oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Like, now it's all... One yeah. person at a time. Yeah. Marilyn was like a size, what, 12? Yeah. yeah, I mean, of course, size 12 then is not the same as size 12 now. Right, but it was, oh, no, it was I, like I, a size 9. Yeah. And now yeah. I saw the beauty industry that in the, in the fashion industry, a size 6 is <sighs> overweight. Yeah. yeah. I just read that. Just, just, yeah. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> According to the fashion. Alright, so I don't know what that is. Thank you.